Hello, all of you then gloriously wonderful people. Astroneer had an update this week, bringing the game to version 1.26, and if I recall, it is the first update without a descriptive name in quite a while. After playing it during a live stream on Twitch, I'm going to name it the, oh my god, look at that, update for Astroneer. So let's take a look at the, oh my god, look at that, update, and talk about what's new, what's changed, and delve into first impressions. I'll be taking all my footage from my live stream, but I'm going to try to avoid major spoilers. If you want all of the spoiler flavored details, I will be uploading the stream VOD to my second channel just after I get this video uploaded. Let's start with what's new. And oh my god, look at that! The hamster wheel contraption prototype that Joe showed off in a live stream like 37 years ago is in the game now as the Gravity Globe. This ingenious vehicle is well worth your time in and of itself. I mean, sure, it's a big ball that can be difficult to control sometimes, and it can hop, but that description alone does not do it justice. You can find them most often on abandoned spaceports, but you might also find them on wrecked rovers. Or if you don't want to go looking for one, though I found like 10 without even trying, you can just trade a Astronium on the trade platform and have one delivered. No matter how you require the gravity globe, it does not require power to operate, and it does provide oxygen for that very important matter of not suffocating. And because we at Vainglorious Gaming are very thorough testers, we discovered that a gravity globe can be blown up and it can be placed in the shredder, which will give you one scrap. But there's more to this wheel than meets the eye. If you attach it to a rover, oh my god, look at that! It will function as a regular old rover seat. Just uh, much cooler. But the gravity globe is not exclusive to astroneers. Oh, no, 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 my friends. Like I said, I don't want to spoil this, but other sentient beings can also pilot the gravity globe. What sentient beings might those be? Well, I'm sure if you think about it for just a moment, you'll figure it out. Moving on, there is also a new portable smelter. Again, you can find these on wreckage. Well, you can allegedly find them on wreckage. To be honest, I didn't look. I was too distracted by the gravity globe and another thing that we'll talk about in a minute. I did, however, use the trade platform to obtain one for the low, low price of eight astronium. This adorable little smelter consumes power at a rate of two units per second, and it'll work in your backpack when attached to storage or just sitting on the ground. It too can be shredded, yielding two scrap. Then there are the new curious items. You can find these in abandoned backpacks and when you use them, oh my God, look at that. Strange things happen, really strange things. I couldn't really put together if it's just a really pretty bit of graphics or if something else bigger is happening, but it's still cool nonetheless. As you locate additional curious items, you'll find there are a whole host of different messages that contain a bit of what I guess is passing for lore these days. To be honest, they raise more questions than they answer, but they're still super cool to mess about with. If you are having difficulty finding curious items, maybe you could ask a snail for some help. Our Marvel friends, also known as LRDs, have some new behavior. Again, I'm not going to spoil this one. All I'll say is activate one so it teleports, then pay attention to what happens. I'm sure you'll say, oh my god, look at that. You can also unlock a new dizzy emote. Still, avoiding spoilers here, but take a moment to consider what might lead an astronaut to becoming rather dizzy, and you'll know what to do. There are a few new items available in the Exo Outfitter store, including the new suit, mask, palette, and emote. And the Exo Farm limited time event is back. It's pretty much a repeat of last year's event. You find Sturdy Squash on Silva Calidor Natrox and harvest them to obtain Sturdy Squash samples. Those same three planets are host to Caldrangia plants, and you can easily locate them since they appear as nav points on your compass. The Caldrangias from the various planets have increasingly better production speeds, so it pays to get the best ones so you can breeze through the event. With the Caldrangia, you can produce three different gases. Two Sturdy Squash samples will produce Squashaline and are worth 15 points in the limited time event. A Sturdy Squash Squash sample and mutant spiny attack to seed will produce out of petrol that is worth 35 points. And a sturdy squash sample plus a mutant elegant spew flower seed will produce noxithane, which is worth 50 points. Once you've racked up 800 points, you'll unlock the Biofuel Throwback Bundle, which has the Giddy Up Emote, Honest Living Hat, and unlocks the schematic for the Pumpkin Shelter. At 2400 points, you get the Lead Leaf, or is it Lead Leaf Emote, 5600 points awards you with the Pollen Count Visor, and 8000 points gets you the Galastro Cap Hat. 
I haven't even started the event yet, but I will be doing so on my Tuesday stream on September 20th around 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So come hang out and chat if you want to check out the event and all of the rewards. And that's all the new items in the Oh My God, Look at That update, but there is still quite a bit to talk about in the way of quality of life improvements. I'm going to hit my favorite highlights and you can check the patch notes linked in the description below if you want all of the details. My personal favorite improvement is, oh my god, look at that! Those huge wreck spaceports are now fully functional landing pads. I have been asking for this for years now, so I was absolutely thrilled when I accidentally clicked on one, thinking it was my base, and I landed my shuttle on top of one of these spaceports. Another personal favorite of mine gets me halfway to another feature request I've had for a while. For those of us who play with a controller, tooltips are now on a bit of a delay. You'll still see an icon for each item the cursor touches, but your screen will not be filled with tooltip spam that always manages to block your view of the thing you're trying to find. Now, System Era, I would be super de duper stoked if we could go just one step further here. So I'm asking, pretty please with sugar on top, give me a toggle option in the settings that lets me disable tooltips entirely. I promise I will send dozens of cookies to your studio if you do. Another little cool tidbit is yet another that I've been wanting to see for quite a while. Extenders have been renamed Power Extenders. No, the renaming isn't the bit I wanted. It's their new functionality. You can now toggle between them being either directional or networked connections. This is really going to increase how and where extenders can be used. The network connections were something I really wanted, but I also value the directional functionality. Now, we have the best of both options. Oh, and I didn't test them out in the live stream, so that's uh, why I'm not showing you any video of it. Finally, the other highlight for me is that the research chamber will automatically pull research items from storage, and you can slot new items to the research chamber as soon as the research is complete instead of waiting for its animation to finish. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of other quality of life improvements that are really going to make things much nicer for all Astroneers. There are also around three dozen bug fixes in this update, taking care of some rather pesky problems that a lot of players ran into. So let's talk about my first impressions of the oh my god look at that update for Astroneer, also known as update 1.26. And you know, my overall reaction is good update. Seriously, I don't have any criticisms or complaints on this one. The new little smelter is going to be incredibly useful. The gravity globe is useful and it gives lots of giggles. The curious items break my brain a little bit, but in a good way. And the other drivers for the gravity globe, along with the new LRD behavior, are a lot of fun to watch. I'm even happy to see more lore out of the game, even if it doesn't really clarify anything. I'm really happy that the lore wasn't introduced solely through paragraphs on a control panel as well. But I guess I do have one criticism. In my Rails update video, I mentioned that I am all for new lore, but I want it to be something that just happens in the game, not something that I have to read. The curious items present their lore through tooltips, so I could complain here, but I won't because at least it's a good half step towards incorporating lore into actual gameplay instead of just static text in a control panel. And now it's your turn. Head down to the comments below and let me know how update 1.26 for Astroneer made you say, oh my god, look at that. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and hey, maybe even click subscribe if you're feeling super generous. I have a variety of games featured on my channel with regular coverage of Astroneer update news and a special Astroneer series debuting early next year. And I do hope you'll join me for my Exo Farm live stream on Tuesday, September 20th, because I'll need chat to keep me going because, well, I'm not exactly a fan of limited time events. But until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.